Hey fellas, welcome to part three of the Pacific Coast Models 132nd Scale Spitfire. In this exciting episode, I do kind of skip ahead a little bit. I get it all put together. I kind of explain how it goes together. Uh, but I get primer on it, uh, do some riveting detail, which I think turned out really good. Throw some paint on it and add some decals. So let's get on with the video. So let's take a look at what I've got going on. As you can see, I've jumped far ahead. Now, we'll start up here at on the top with the canopies, and they went on okay. Not as good as I had liked, but, uh, you know, nothing I couldn't handle. Now, I knew that I had a big gap along the front of the windscreen here, so I filled a lot of that in with the tester's clear glue, which dries clear, and then I painted black inside of there, and then I came back with this tester's putty. A lot of people dog this, but I really like it. I use it for a lot of stuff. So I just squeezed some tester's putty in there, and then once it dried, I took a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol, and I just smoothed it and wiped away what I um, and, and contoured the front of that, and that looks pretty good as far as I'm concerned. And then once I get the camouflage on it, it's going to uh, to hide hide some of those imperfections. <clears throat> but uh, overall, I'm happy with it. Now, I did leave the bubble top off, and I don't normally like to do this because it's a pain in the butt to mask off the interior and to keep overspray from getting in there. <clears throat> my, my main concern is getting overspray on the inside of the windows because that's the hardest to get out. So I think I've got that taken care of. But I left the bubble top off because back here needs to be painted, and that bubble canopy overlaps, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I had glued it all down at the same time which is what I normally like to do. Um, the wings went on pretty well. Now I did have a little bit of a step right here that I had to sand and rescribe. Uh, there was also a big step with this front piece of the intake. It was just a pain in the butt, but uh, I got it pretty decent. And again, once I paint it and weather it, it's gonna hide some minor imperfections, but I got that taken care of. Uh, but overall, I mean, it went together okay. The uh, I got a couple coats of, of my gray primer down on it. And for those new people, I use Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray. And I like this color because then I can see all the imperfections. So I've taken care of most of those. But I am going to start riveting. Now, I printed off uh, some, some uh, pictures off the Internet that show where the rivets should be. But before I go to start doing those... <clears throat> I do have some of these rivets right along here that got sanded away that I do need to replace. If you can uh, take a look at those. Now those are a little bit different. Uh, so what I've got, I don't even know what these are. They're some kind of punch and die or punch, or punch sets or something. But they come in all different sizes and they make a round indention. And I'll show you how this works. And uh, I really like these. So this one right here... I've got one with the same diameter of uh, uh, as my rivets that I need to replicate. So I'm just going to put this in here, on here, press it down, and it will make a rivet. And then if I want, I can twist it, and now I've got a rivet. So I'm just replicating these that I messed that I missed. And then I can come in here in the center. I can find it. There we go. And then I'll just come in the center with my uh, little center punch thing here. And it's not perfect, but uh, just replacing those rivets. So I'm going to go along and check and make sure um, that I re-rivet any of those lost rivets to my uh, sanding. And I think I'm pretty good. There might be a couple down here that I have to fix, but I'm going to go ahead and check and double check and make sure I got all those taken care of. And then we'll come back and I'm going to uh, start riveting with the rivet wheel and start uh, creating all the rivets along the wings 
and then the uh, the fuselage. So this is one of those things where you get a third of the way through and you realize, oh my god, <laughs> what did I make myself do? But I think it's really it's it's really going to make it uh, really set it off. So. I've already got this wing done, the upper wing surface. I still have to do the lower wings and the, the side of the fuselage and stuff. But uh, take a look at the difference that that makes. This side's obviously the one that's not riveted. And it's not something that's in your face. And, uh, but, it, but it is there, and it's something, once it gets painted and you get up close, that's something that you're really going to notice, I think. So how I'm doing this, normally I would just string my tape along and then I would go along and make my rivets with my riveting tool. If I can find it, I lost it. Yeah, there we go. I got my Rosie the Riveter, and this is a uh, 1.0 millimeter Rosie the Riveter. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually using the tape and drawing lines. So I'm actually putting the lines down with a, with a pencil first so I can make sure that they all look that I have them where I want them before I actually commit to putting holes in the paint or in the primer. So I can come along and erase if I need to. And then I'll just lift the tape up. Now that one I got actually a little too close, so I'll just use my eraser and erase my line. And with this primer that I use, it uh, it's really good stuff. You wouldn't be able to do this with Vallejo primer. I can tell you that much. So I'm starting where I know where I can uh, cheat off the panel line right here based on the drawing that I have. So I'm just going to start here. And then I'll just work my way off the panel lines throughout the whole wing. So let's... Now if I would have went ahead and used my riveting tool along the tape and I was off, uh, I'm not going to change it unless I get my sandpaper out and my, my uh, putty and fill in those little holes. So this way I can actually see what it's going to look like before I rivet, okay? So I'll draw out all my lines and then I'll take my riveting tool and then just go along and rivet where my pencil lines are. Um, and that's basically how I'm doing it. So I'm gonna get on with this and uh, get this all marked off. I'll do the upper surfaces, the lower surfaces, and then I'll come back and work my way back because I don't think there are a lot of these small rivets up front. I think, uh, I think the rivets use I think the rivets are starting right right around this area where the uh, the cockpit is and and move back. So see you in a bit. Let's take a look at uh, how I'm going to paint this monster. And the owner wants me to do Broom Hilda. Now, I think it's actually supposed to be Brune with an N and not an M. But we're going to go with Broom Hilda because that's what the decal says. And I can't find any close-up pictures of the nose art. So uh, I'm just going to call it Broom Hilda. He also wants this put on the base. So I will uh, come up with some artwork and uh, try to replicate the nose art for the base. The decals look really good, by the way, too. The only thing that I, I probably will paint is the uh, walkway stripes on the plane. And I'll do that. <clears throat> I'll show you how I do that. It's basically when I put the, the black primer coat down, I will just mask off this area with th thin strips of tape. And that's going to be much better than trying to deal with these little bitty... Uh, real thin uh, and narrow decals. 
So the uh, the only other thing with this one that the owner wanted was he wanted the spinner instead of sky. He wanted that the ocean gray camo. No problem. That's uh, some Spitfire people will probably freak out about that. But hey, this is the way the guy wants it. So that's the way we're painting it. And um, I do use Tamiya paints. And I know I'll get questions what I use for this and what I use for that. Now, keep in mind, my, my theory on paint is as long as it's close... Who really cares? You get a lot of people that say, oh, that's not right. You can't use this specific color because, you know, it's just a shade too dark and whatever. When, when you when you get to blending and, and fading and in, in the, under different lighting conditions, it really doesn't make a difference. <laughs> and if you're that uh, worked up about it, then uh, I don't know. <laughs> go, go do something else. But for the, uh, the uh, ocean gray color, I've got this XF82, which looks pretty close. It actually says on here, Ocean Gray 2 RAF, but uh, that looks pretty close, so I'm not gonna have to mix up any for that. For the underside, I think it's medium gray, medium C gray. I've mixed up some XF19 and some XF54, so sky gray and dark C gray, and uh, I came up with my, my C gray down here. It's gonna be on the bottom. For the uh, dark green, I mixed up, and I may not have had to do this, but uh, I mixed up XF58 olive green and XF62 olive drab. Um, I forgot what the ratio was. I just mixed it up to uh, to where I thought it looked looked pretty good, and I came up with a dark green color. Now for the sky color, I'm going to use XF21 sky, but I am going to lighten it with white. So again, I'm just just using white and uh, to to lighten up some of these colors and and I'll do some some highlighting and lighten it up some more and 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 do some color modulation on that. So that's the paint that I'm going to work with. Okay. So what we've got here fellas is I went ahead and once I got all my rivets done, I took some Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 black and went over the model. I wasn't real concerned if it was an even coat because this is all gonna be modeled anyway. So I've got that on. I took a real high grit, like a 6,000 grit uh, sandpaper and went over it just to smooth out any roughness that I had. I didn't have too much, but I uh, did have a little bit, but I smoothed that out. And then I uh, took some real thin strips of tape and masked off where my wing walk lines are going to be so I don't have to mess with the decals and I took this little pencil I got at Hobby Lobby it's a it's an all-surface pencil in white and I drew out my camouflage I just find this a little bit easier when I'm trying to replicate a camouflage to draw it out first or to at least have a map or something uh, I'm not going to mask this off this is all going to be freehand so uh, I it's just a lot easier for me when I go to airbrush that I have have it set on the model where I want it. So I drew it out in this, and this comes off pretty easily. But uh, I've got it all on there. And uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do my uh, marbling layer in this Mr. Base White. I'm gonna thin it down a lot. And I'm just gonna go around and, and uh, marble inside of the panel lines, inside the rivet lines, because I want this one to be really stark. I want it to be pretty dirty and grungy and weathered. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on with that. And once I get this marbling layer down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some aluminum and spray it right along the, uh, the wing root here. And so I can, I can uh, scratch some, some of the paint off to, to wear it out. Um, and then probably along the leading edges of the wings as well. And I'll use some of my scratches effects to take care of to, uh, to put down before I start spraying my base coats down. <clears throat> so that's my plan. I'm going to get on with uh, painting this and then I'll probably show you some pictures or I'll stop and show you what it looks like in the various stages. <clears throat> so I've got the marbling layer done and I've got my aluminum sprayed. Now I'm not going to go overboard on the chipping but I am going to do a little bit and I'll probably do some uh, minor chipping with a brush and some some gray paint. But I, I do want an aluminum look right here along the uh, wing the wing root and the leading edges. So I've got that on there. 
So now I'm just taking the chipping or scratches effects from uh, Ammo MIG and I'm brushing it on. And again, you can you can spray this with an airbrush, but rather than mess with that, I just like uh, brushing it on. It doesn't really make a difference from what I found. And I'll brush it along the leading edge. And again, I'm not going to go too in-depth with chipping all this. But uh, I do want to add some somewhat realistic chipping along these areas. And rather than spray, spray the whole model with... Um, the aluminum and waste my aluminum paint when I'm not when I can just go along and and hand brush some chipping in in small areas that I'm, I'm just doing this this these sections so that's where I'm at I'm gonna let this dry I'll probably do the uh, the bottom first spray my uh, uh, my medium gray on the bottom medium C gray and then mask that off and then we'll I'll uh, come over Start with uh, one of the colors, probably the gray, the ocean gray on top. Get that down and then come back with the dark green and see how that looks. Well, as you can tell, I've really skipped ahead and um, got my chipping done. Now I am going to go back with a brush and uh, do some other chips, small chips around the plane. And uh, I went ahead and decided just to paint everything, just because when I get into decals, I always get frustrated. And so I just went ahead and decided to, to paint all the insignias and the lettering that I could. Now there is a, uh, some smaller letters that uh, I really can't cut out on my Cricut <clears throat> that go along here, the tail numbers. So I am gonna use those decals. And there are a lot of other small decals I'm gonna use as well as the nose art. So. Uh, I've got my wheels painted and just uh, I, I used just a real thin brush and got in there <clears throat> painted the wheel wells the interior green first and then uh, came back with a real thin almost like a wash and uh, painted the the tires <clears throat> so those look pretty good now what I'm gonna do and you can see the, the modeling that came through and it, and it looks pretty pretty rugged but what I've decided to do is I'm gonna <clears throat> I've lightened up the green color and I'm gonna do this with the gray so I don't know if the camera will pick this up but I lighten the green color up with some yellow and uh, some isopropyl alcohol and it's real thin so I can get in there real fine and I'm gonna go along and I'm just gonna <clears throat> highlight some areas and pick out some different spots to lighten up with both the green and the gray I'm just going to come in here with my airbrush and I'm going to lighten up some areas with this with this uh, green and I like to use isopropyl alcohol because it dries really fast and I'm just going to highlight some areas and really make this thing look worn and tattered. And I'm not going to go over every little spot, but I am just going to pick out some different areas with this lighter color. And it's going to make the other areas pop. So I've just highlighted this one spot up here on top. I'll pick out some areas down here, like maybe where these... Uh, little access doors are maybe come down here where it's a little worn lighten that up a little bit And I've got my fine airbrush, my Procon Boy 770. I love this thing. See how I can get in here nice and detailed. And with this isopropyl alcohol, it dries extremely fast. And it's real thin, so I can get in here real fine. And 
And again, I'm not, I'm not going over the whole thing. I'm just picking out different areas. Maybe right along here. And that's just gonna break up this, this uh, paintwork <clears throat> and give it a little extra added flair. Now I'll do the same thing with the gray, and but I'll mix that with white. And uh, then we'll come back and I'm gonna put the decals on and I'm not gonna do a clear coat. A lot of people say that you have to have a clear coat. The only reason I ever used um, a, a clear coat for my decals is because I thought it, the, the decals adhere, adhere better. But uh, I'm not gonna waste my time with that. Uh, Will Pattison recently uploaded a video where he put decals on a piece of sandpaper and <laughs> didn't have any issues. So, you know, the uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just throw them on the, the paint job. It's gonna save time and uh, it really probably doesn't make much of a difference. So, see you in a minute. So how I do my decals is I've got a coffee warmer and then one of these little tins you get at Walmart, kind of like a food tin or a baking tin, and uh, just one of those little throwaway ones. I've got a brush that I only use for decals, so paint never gets on it. I've got my Q-tips over here. I've got some uh, Microsol. I, I don't use Microset anymore. It really doesn't make a difference in my opinion. But I've got this stuff uh, to put on the decal after I get them on. Uh, set of tweezers and these are the ones I, I typically just use for decals and my plane also got a little paper towel over here so what I'll do is I'm gonna cut I've got all my decals cut up and then set apart for the top the side and the bottom right and left side and then the bottom so I'll just dip my decal in, in the, uh, the warm water. Let that set for a minute. So yeah, I've got these all divided up. I've got the, uh, the left side, the top, and then uh, all my other sides. So I've got them all cut up and organized. <clears throat> and now I've got the, uh, the uh, little uh, paper here that shows me where the decals go and I like to orient it the same way that the plane is oriented so I can get this somewhat correct. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of water, put it on here. Now the water is not going to affect the acrylic paint and then this should slide on here just like so. And then I can take away some of this water with a Q-tip. Get it on there where I want it. And it's always good to wet your Q-tip first. Whereas my, since I'm working on a Spitfire, my cotton bud. And then I just roll over it like that. Now these look like pretty good decals. So hopefully they'll work out okay. I, I can't stand, can't stand decals. Now let's put the other one on the other side. And when you get the decals on, if you have problems moving them, just add a little bit more water. And then I can also take my tweezers and push them around a little bit. Try to get them even. I know some people use tape to... Uh, to line up their decals. I just do it by eye. They're not always perfect, but I like using my Mark One eyeball. And 
and that's all there is to it. Now, <clears throat> then I'll take a little bit of this micro saw, and I'm just gonna put it along the decal. Might be a little much. Now what I like to do is once that starts to uh, affect the decal, a lot of people tell you not to do this, but I get away with it sometimes. I'll take a wet cotton bud and then I'll go and I'll smush it down. And you gotta be pretty gentle with it because depending on the type of decal that you have, it may uh, may tear it apart, so you got to be kind of careful. And then usually I have to come back in with uh, some more decal setting solution. Sometimes with some Solvacet. So that's how I do my decals. All right, that should be about uh, enough length on this video. I'm going to finish up getting the decals on. We'll uh, do some weathering on the next video and then show you the finished model. See you, fellas.